Joining us from Santa Barbara, California is World Business Academy President Rinaldo Brudoco. Recognized as a business visionary and futurist, Mr. Brudoco has served on the board of the Men's Warehouse for 18 years. He was also co-founder and CEO of Channel 100, the nation's first pay cable television operation. Considered an expert on emerging technologies, he joins us to talk about threats facing the music industry and musicians. Mr. Brudico, welcome to Newsmax TV. Well, thank you for having me, Kathleen. It's nice to make your acquaintance this way. Well, let's talk about how hard it is to be a musician these days. We see plenty of superstars like Beyonce and the greats like Elton John, but it seems that the business has gone far beyond cutting a demo tape and getting a record deal. Is talent enough anymore? And in your view, what goes into hitting it big? Well, and, and no, talent's not enough. I, I, and by the way, I'm not sure that it ever was. I think there was a system. And uh, in order to answer the question, you have to look at the history of the, the recorded music industry because it's, it's imploding right now, meaning that it's collapsing so fast that it's not even, um, it, it, it's difficult to predict how much quicker it can go, but it's clearly being swept away by a tide of electronic revolution. And that revolution has destroyed uh, virtually all the material institutions that created this industry. Now, iTunes and other distribution models have drastically changed the industry. Does this put the artist in a losing position? And how about the record companies? Who's making the most here? No, actually, the, the artists are about to win, which is the exciting thing, because what's happening is the, the very vertical, pyramidical style of control that the recorded music companies created to dominate the industry since the 50s, that has now been shattered, and it's been shattered by Napster. If you remember the Napster case about 12 years ago, Napster was the first time that we had the issue of file sharing come up. Now, the recorded music industry took the position that they would sue Napster out of business based on copyright infringements. Well, fair enough, but I kept waiting to see what will they do for a response. You can only sue for so long, and then you have to come up with a different economic model, <clears throat> and the industry was unable to find one. I'm really pleased to report that a new economic model does exist now. It's brand new. It's only five months old because uh, it was launched literally in February of, of 2011. But that economic model creates power in the individual artist. So what is this model? Tell us about it. Well, it, a company that I, I founded and I'm chairman of currently is called Fame Wizard. And what it does is it touches on the entrepreneurial zeal that every musician has for their own music. As you noted in my introduction, I've been teaching business for almost four decades now. In teaching how to be successful as an entrepreneur, I had to create ways for the entrepreneur called a musician to become the CEO of their own music business. And it turns out when they do that, the whole world changes. Let me give you an example. The antidote to file sharing is the enemy is to embrace file sharing and make it your friend. What about illegal downloading? Like just how big of a threat to the industry and individual artists is it? Well, let's take an artist that's made it a friend. Um, Probably the most talented, multi-capacity artist today is Lady Gaga. A very bright woman, incredible self-promoter, has talent, works hard. And if you notice, she's not worried about the fact that all of her songs can be stolen for free, but none of her little monsters ever want to. Because the little monsters see her as their leader. In other words, she's created a virtual musical village. And what I'm training people to do in Fame Wizard, what our company is about, is to create a musical village that supports you as an artist, as their unique artist, expressing their hopes and fears, loves and interests. So what's happened, and the answer to the question I just asked, how do you get people to care and pay for music they can get for free? The answer is, you can't trick them into it, and you can't control them into it by distributing plastic. What you can do is do what's happened since human beings first walked the earth. Every village has always supported its artists. Okay, so, so let's say that I'm a talented musician just starting out. What are my options, would you say? Number one, you must learn what the business of the music business is. See, artists think that if they can play musically or if they're good with their music, that's enough. It never was and it isn't now. So what you need to do is become passionate about being in the business of the music business. If you just want to play your music because you love to play it, you're a hobbyist. That's okay. That's wonderful. You'll go to parties. People will ask you to sit down and strum a few tunes on your guitar or play the piano. But at the end of the day, you better have a day job because you're never going to make money in the music business. No lightning is going to strike. All right. Ronaldo Britico, thanks so much for speaking with us. It's been so great to have you on Newsmax TV. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.